um, could Jesus have sinned? And if he was not capable of uh, sinning, how could he be truly able to sympathize with our weaknesses? According to Hebrews 4.15, how, how could he sympathize with our weaknesses if he cannot be able to sin? And if he could uh, not sin, what was the point of the temptation in the first place? Have you ever asked yourself these questions? Now, there are two sides of this interesting question. It is important to remember that this is not a question of whether Jesus sinned because uh, both sides agree. As the Bible clearly says that uh, Jesus did not sin. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, Jesus did not sin. See, for he, has, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. So Jesus did not sin. He knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay, and also First Peter uh, two twenty two. It also tells us the same thing. Uh, First Peter two verse twenty two. It also tells us the same thing that Jesus did not sin. Who did not sin? Neither was guile found in his mouth. Jesus did not sin. So what was the point of the temptation then, if Jesus could not sin? Now the question is whether Jesus could have sinned. That that should be. <laughs> let's let's put it like this whether jesus could have seen because um you see um those who hold to peccability believe that jesus could have sinned but uh, did not which view is correct you know because there are those also who hold impeccability believing that jesus could have sinned there is the peccability versus Impeccability. Could Jesus have sinned? So which view is correct? The clear teaching of scripture is that Jesus was Im impeccable. Impeccable of sinning. Jesus could not have sinned. If he could have sinned, he would still be able to sin today because he retains the same essence he did while living on earth. <laughs> Remember, he was still a member of the Trinity. Okay? He is God-man. And will forever remain so, having full deity and full humanity, so united in one person as to be indivisible. So to believe that Jesus could sin is to believe that God would also sin. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Remember this? Remember Colossians 1.19? 1.19. Remember this? For it pleased the Father that in him... Should all fullness dwell in who? In Christ. So meaning, Jesus was still God and he's still God. And Colossians 2, 2, 9 also says, Colossians 2, 9, it tells us also, see, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. So in Jesus was all the Trinity presented. Now, if he could have sinned, it means uh, he could have fallen the whole trinity could have fallen. Although Jesus is fully human, eh? he was not born with the sinful nature that we are born with. He certainly was tempted in the same way we are, in that uh, temptations were put before him by Satan. Okay? Jesus was tempted. All this was put before him by Satan. Yet he remained sinless because God is incapable of sinning. It is against his very nature. It's not the nature of God to sin. Matthew 4, 1. Matthew 4, verses 1. It tells us about this. Then was Jesus led up to the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. He was tempted, just like you and me. Okay? But of course, we know very well from the story that he never sinned. You can go back to the whole story and read it. Let me also read for you Hebrews, Hebrews uh, uh, 2. 18. See what the Bible says here. Hebrews 2.18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Him, he was tempted, just like we have read. But he did not make it. He did not uh, agree to the temptation. He is, so, with that, he is able to succor them that are tempted. So if you are tempted, then uh, he will be able to understand and tell you, yes, I saw temptation myself. 
Are you seeing the point? And also James. Um, and also, let, let's see also Hebrews uh, 4.15. Hebrews 4 verse 15. See what the Bible says here. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. So Jesus never sinned, but yes, the temptation was there. Jesus was tempted. Okay? He was tempted. And also, when we check uh, James, uh, James, uh, James um, one thirteen, it says something here. Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted any man. God cannot tempt any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it's finished bringeth forth death. Now you may look at these verses and wonder, mm, then why was Jesus tempted? Okay, why was Jesus tempted? Where is it? Yes, why was Jesus tempted? You see, sin is by definition a trespassing of the law, okay? Sin is a trespassing of the law or transgression of the law. That's something you have to understand. And the law is by nature what God would or would not do. Therefore, sin is anything that God would not do by his very nature. You have to understand this. So, this is basically what God would not do. So, to be tempted... To be tempted is not, and in of itself, it's sinful. A person could be, uh, a person could tempt you with something uh, you have no desire to do, such as committing murder, participating in sexual perversion, perversions. You, uh, you, you probably uh, definitely have no desire in whatsoever part of these actions, but you are still tempted because someone placed the possibility before you. Okay? This is exactly what happened to Jesus. Satan placed the possibility, okay? He placed a possibility here before Jesus. But did Jesus buy the temptation? No. So there are at least two definitions for the word, uh, for the word temptation or tempted. Number one, we can say that uh, it's basically to have a sinful proposition suggested to you by someone or something outside yourself or by your own sin nature, like this, what Jesus uh, did here. It was presented, but uh, it was not his nature. Or number two, to consider actually participating in a sinful act and the possible pleasures and consequences of such acts to the degree that, that the act is already taking place in your mind. You see, for us, Jesus told us that um, even when you look at a woman lustfully, you've already committed the sin with her. If you hate your brother, you've already killed that person. So there's that other possibility whereby when you agree, okay, you, 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 act, you participate in a sinful act or the possible pleasures, you think it in your mind, such an act is a degree or is something which brings forth something that explains that uh, the action is already taking pl a place in your mind. So the first definition does not describe a sinful act or a thought. The one that I've told you, this one, where Jesus was presented with sin, but he did not sin. But the second one uh, represents a, a sinful act. When you dwell upon a sinful act and consider how you might be able to bring it to pass, you have already close, uh, crossed the line of sin. Jesus was tempted in the fashion of definition, definition one, eh? the one that we've given you, this one, eh? except that he was never tempted by sin's nature because it, is not, uh, it did not exist within him. But Satan proposed Satan's sinful acts to Jesus, but he had no inner desire to participate in the sin. That is Jesus. Therefore, he was tempted like we are, but remained sinless. I don't know if you understand. And then instead, he took our sin and nailed it at the cross. So instead of taking his own sin, he nailed our sin to the cross. I don't know if you understand the point. So those who hold uh, to the 
those who hold to the pickability believe that if Jesus could have sinned, he could not have truly experienced temptation and therefore could not truly emphasize uh, emphasize the struggles and temptations against sin. We have to remember that one does not have to experience something in order to understand it. Therefore, God knows everything about everything. While God has never had the desire to sin, he has most definitely never sinned. So God knows and understands what sin is. He understands 100%. He understands what sin is. And God knows and understands what it is like to be tempted. Jesus can emphasize with our temptations because he knows, okay? Jesus knows. He knows what it is to be tempted. But he does not know what it is like to sin. This does not prevent him from assisting us because uh, we are tempted with sins that are common to man. Remember what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Okay? 1 Corinthians uh, 10, verse 13. The sins that you are tempted, they are all common to man, even if they are common to him when he was here as a man. There has no temptation taken you, but such uh, as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will will with temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it so there's no temptation which is new to man even jesus himself was tempted are you seeing the point so these signs uh, these sins sorry these sins generally can be boiled down to three different types okay we know the three types of sins the first one is the last of the eyes okay the last of the eyes you look at things and you desire them. The last of the eyes, that's that's one of the, the kind of sins. And after that, we have the last of the flesh. You look at something and you desire it. The last of the flesh, that's another kind of sin. And of course, the pride of life. You want to be raised above everyone else. You want to be feel as if you're being worshipped. That's, that's the pride of life. Those are the three kinds of sins which are there in the world. And the Bible tells us about that in First John. Uh, first John, first John 2 16. He tells us about that kind of sin. He says, For all that is in the world, everything that is in the world, okay, don't think there's anything else. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. So, these are the only three kinds of sins which are in the world. Everything, this is just the lust of the eyes, you lust for something, you desire something, you know. You lust for the flesh and you have the pride of life. Those are the only types of sins that you'll find in the world. Okay? So, you have to examine the temptation and sin of Eve, if you want to understand this, as well as the temptation of Jesus. And you will find that the temptations for each came from these three categories. If you look at very well the temptations of Eve, they all three came from these three categories. And Jesus was tempted in every way and in every area that we are, but he remained perfectly holy. Although our corrupt natures will have the inner desire to participate in some, sin, in some sins, we have the ability through Christ to overcome sin because we are no longer, we are no longer slaves to sin, but rather slaves to God. Okay? We are rather slaves to God. And remember, Remember, mm, okay, Jesus himself, he nailed it at the cross. Every kind of sin, every kind of desire, every kind of thing. And if we truly died with Christ and rose with him, then we, he has canceled the records of the charges against us and took away the sin here. So we can be able to escape him, uh, sin by his power, not by our power. Are you seeing the point? We are not slaves of sin, but we are slaves of God. Romans 6, okay. Romans, uh, Romans 6, um, 6, verse 2, okay? It says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You're already dead to sin. Remember what I've just shown you? That uh, the sin was transgression of the law, but Jesus nailed it. So we are no longer under the law, but we are now living under grace. We are now living by the faith of Christ. Are you seeing the point? And also we can see Romans uh, uh, 6 verse 16. See what it says. 
Romans uh, 6, verse 16. And we can read to 22. See what he says. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, he servants you, you, uh, you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or disobedience unto righteousness? So if you obey Satan, he's going to tempt you. And you're going to fall like him. But if you obey Christ, you will be tempted and all these things will happen to you. But you will not fall because Jesus never fell. So whoever you want to yield yourself to, then you become the servants of whoever you obey. Okay? But God be thanked that you are the servants of sin, but you have obeyed him from the heart. You have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, mm -hmm, you became the servants of righteousness. Are you seeing this? We have been made servants of righteousness. Servants of who? The one who nailed the sin on the cross. We are now his servant. We are not of the devil who is always tempting. But now we have already nailed this. And let's uh, I'll continue here. Mm, verse 19. Speak. After the man of men, because of the infirmity of your... F I speak after the man of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your member servants unto uncleanness, and to iniquity and iniquity, then so now yield your member servants unto righteousness, unto holiness. Now what does this mean? Before you used to walk and head towards where Satan is. You're tempted and you go. You're tempted and you go. But now, there's a man called Jesus here, who came and he was tempted... And he defeated Satan. He defeated Satan. And after he defeated Satan, now, since you are in him, stop walking as if you are defeated still. Walk in, in the newness of the one who defeated the sin. Are you seeing the point? For when you are servants, you are the servants of sin, you are free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things that thereof that are, you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Are you seeing the point? But now made free from sin, you become servants of God and your fruit unto holiness and the end is lasting life. My friends, all these kind of things, Jesus escaped them. He was tempted but he did not fulfill it. And now since we are in him, let's now not keep on looking back to where we have been. Let us look forward and avoid all these kind of things because now we are in Christ who has already uh, who has already defeated temptations and if you're not in Christ again I always like to give the gospel because there are some some people who don't know the gospel how can you be in Christ so that you can escape these temptations of sins it's through the gospel what is the gospel gospel is basically good news good news about what what Jesus did for us at the cross he nailed our sin at the cross remember what I told you Remember, Jesus nailed it at the cross. So now, the gospel is basically understanding this fact. How that Christ died. How did he die? By shedding his blood. Why was the blood important? Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Why was the blood important to be shed? Because Leviticus 11, 17, 11 says that uh, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So the blood had to be taken out so that somebody can be forgiven. forgiven. Why the blood? Because uh, the life is there. And if the life is there, the life has to be taken out. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. And if you sin, your life has to be taken away from you. But while we were still sinners, Jesus died for our sins. He died for our sins. And he said, I am your propitiation. If you believe in me, if you believe in my death, in the blood that I shed, then you will be saved. That's exactly what the gospel is. And all after understanding that, then you tell Christ what you have believed. You tell him through a confession. You confess to him what you have believed. You see, if you confess with your mouth, confession is what? Saying what you know. You can't confess what you don't know. So you tell him, Jesus, I have now understood that you died for my sins and you were buried and rose again, according to the scriptures. You nailed all my sins at the cross. I thank you for this and I bless you for this and please make me a new creature. And after you do that, you tell Christ what you have believed. My friends, you are saved. And all these sins... They have been nailed here. And all the temptations and all the issues, they have been nailed here. So now, don't walk in those kind of lusts again. Because you have already been changed. Okay? 
has been as, uh, I'm hoping this has been a blessing to you. You've been able to understand something. Please, you can share this video to other people. Let them get to hear and get to understand. And also, you can subscribe so that uh, you don't miss a new video. And uh, hit the notification button so that whenever we post something, you can always be notified. God bless you and have a blessed, blessed time.